Hello, everyone. My name is Kimberly, and I'm very happy to be here today to talk to you about our work on securing multi-user content sharing for augmented reality applications. So you've probably heard of augmented reality or mixed reality. For the purposes of this talk, I'll stick with the term augmented reality. Uh, these are technologies that have been hitting the news on platforms ranging from smartphones to head-mounted displays to even car windshields, with uh, com coming out from uh, uh, small companies and large tech giants alike and with applications ranging from gamers, gaming to commerce to enterprise. And what all of these technologies have in common is that they continuously process sensory input from the user's surroundings and overlay digital content on top of the user's perception of the world. So conceptually, we can think of this as a pipeline in which an AR application takes some sensory input and uses that information to generate digital output to then give to the user. And because of the power that AR applications have over users' perception, uh, the security and privacy community has done some important work in trying to apply good security and privacy principles to this scenario. Some prior work, for instance, has looked at the risks of feeding AR applications raw sensor input and has proposed filtering this input before it reaches the application. Other work has looked at uh, the risks of un uh, unregulated output going straight to the user and has proposed applying policies to that output that may be malformed or misbehaving. Uh, before uh, it reaches the user. And this is all very important work, and uh, it's a, a great first step towards being able to uh, have a more secure and private augmented reality space. But the future of augmented reality is likely to look more like this, where multiple users are working together, maybe in the same physical space, maybe not, to sh collaborate on some shared virtual content. And the solution to modeling this from a security and privacy perspective is not simply to replicate this pipeline. This doesn't capture the interactions between the users and the virtual space that they inhabit. So we have to instead look at these interactions and ask ourselves, what could possibly go wrong? Now, to answer this question, I'm going to abstract this diagram away a bit so we can see what's going on. Suppose that while these three users are working together, a message pops up for one of them that's publicly visible but really should not have been. And suppose another user comes along and decides to draw some virtual graffiti on the model that everyone is working on, or decides to play a prank on another user by attaching a sign to them that they were not expecting, or, and apologies to anyone who's very afraid of spiders, creates a giant arachnid that everyone can see and nobody can get rid of. These are all potential problems, and if we're not careful, we're going to build a world in which they're commonplace. In fact, we're already starting to see precursors of these issues and technologies today. Virtual reality, which is a step ahead of augmented reality in penetrating the consumer market, has been grappling with issues of harassment between players for years. And in smartphone augmented reality, we're starting to see cases of vandalism and other such misdemeanors. So we have an opportunity as a security and privacy community at this critical time to work on these problems and work to mitigate them before they become more widespread. Which brings us to our goal which is to design multi-user AR security and privacy primitives. Now, this is a pretty broad goal. And in order to make this more specific and formalize this, we formulated a, case, a set of case studies that set, sit in several strategic positions in the design space of possible AR applications. We looked at applications where sharing is an opt-in procedure versus an opt-out procedure. And we looked at those where uh, the uh, users are co-located versus ones in which users are not necessarily in the same physical space. And the three case studies that are relevant for us here are paintball, in which uh, multiple users can shoot virtual paint at each other. No mess. Uh, Multi-team whiteboards, in which multiple users can uh, work potentially in same or separate spaces, uh, alone or together, to uh, write content on virtual whiteboards. And community art, in which users can create freeform virtual content, and place it around the world for everyone to see. And from these case studies, we were able to build out our threat model in a more specific and formalized way. We looked specifically at multiple users of a single application who may attempt to share unwanted AR content with other users, to see private AR content belonging to another user, or to perform unwanted manipulations on AR content belonging to another user. So now we have a more specific goal. We want to design multi-user AR security and privacy primitives that protect users from each other. But we're not done. We remember this example. 
and we remember that this is a good use case of AR technology. We want to still enable this to happen. We want to enable application developers to easily build this kind of an application without inviting the problems that we introduced earlier. Which means we need to design our, to achieve our goal in a functionality friendly sort of way. And to give you a sense of why this is hard, I'd like to contrast uh, the kick me sign from before with the paintball case study. Both of these involve attaching virtual content to users. But for the sign, it's bad and we want to prevent it. For paintball, it's good and even necessary for application functionality. And the difference between these, critically, is dependent entirely on application semantics, which means that if we're building a general purpose solution, we cannot distinguish good versus bad a priori in this case. We have to loop application developers in and give them a voice in what makes sense in their application. So what we need to do to achieve our goal is to help developers to achieve our goal and to give them the power to choose the primitives that make sense for their application without overwhelming them with options and without making them re-implement a lot of code. So that brings us to the full form of our goal, which is to design functionality-friendly, multi-user AR security and privacy primitives that help developers to protect users from each other. Our approach to achieving this goal is to build an application-level developer toolkit. One benefit of this approach is that by packaging controls behind an API, we can reduce the developer burden uh, for the same reasons that I, an API is, is usually a good idea. By not relying on, on OS support, we facilitate the ease of deployment in practice. We make it easy for our, us to share our toolkit with developers through standard channels. And we also open the possibility of cross-platform compatibility. That does mean that we can't protect against misuse or abuse by an application developer. But we consider this to be a reasonable trade-off in light of the other benefits and of the state of the technology. And we also note that operating system support uh, is necessary but not sufficient to protect against malicious app developers at any rate. Uh, so we leave that to future work. In order to achieve our, our, our goal and to, and to build our design, we break down our design components along two major dimensions. First, the locus of control, and second, the type of control. For the locus of control, we have outbound sharing controls, which are those that pertain to how content belonging to one user is shared with other users. And inbound sharing controls, which pertain to how a user's reality is augmented by content coming from other users. For type of control, we have what and with whom an object is shared, where an object is shared, and how much information from that object is shared. We have design points for each of the entries in this table. And the ones that I've highlighted in blue are the ones where there is the biggest gap between the precedence of existing technologies and the requirements of this new augmented reality setting. What they all have in common is that they hinge on the tight integration of virtual content in augmented reality with users' physical 3D space. This is what's new about AR. This is what is driving a lot of the innovations that we need to make in order to adapt to this very physical sort of a setting. And for the sake of time, I'm only going to be able to talk about one of these, which is private content in a shared world. And I choose this one because it highlights the difficulty of achieving both functionality and security at the same time, and the considerations that we need to take into account in order to do so. So what is this problem? The problem is effectively that we are human, and we are accustomed to seeing the same things in the same places. This is natural. We scaffold our behavior around this shared world understanding. For instance, we don't stand in front of the TV when someone's watching it. But augmented reality doesn't have that kind of physicality unless the content itself is also shared between users. And so what this means, uh, then, is that there's a problem when we consider the simple solution of making private content private just by making it private. Let's take our earlier example of this message that popped up for only this one particular user. If we decided that only this user should see this message, we could run into a case in which another user can walk in front of or through that message and at the same time not have any sort of a behavioral cue that they're doing anything problematic. And this disconnect is severe enough that one AR headset manufacturer has explicitly told developers that all content should be made publicly visible to all users all the time, which solves the issue of a shared world but brings us right back to where we started in terms of trying to manage private content in this world that everyone can see. So this seems on its face to be an irreconcilable tension. 
but it is not. And in fact, in our design, we're able to solve this problem uh, with a technique that we call ghosting. This technique effectively separates out the sharing of the location and physicality of an object from the sharing of other sensitive information that an object may contain. So in this example, for instance, the message that only should be shown to one user uh, may appear in full to just that user and may appear to other users simply as a gray box, which I've illustrated here with an icon, but in practice, we give developers the flexibility to choose what the kind of ghost object makes sense for them uh, in the, based on what, what information that object is conveying. And so in doing so, we are able to give all users a shared cue as to what's going on in their shared virtual space. But we also have the benefit of protecting the private content only for the user who should see it. And so in doing so, we're able to both achieve functionality and security at the same time. We built an implementation of our design that we called Share AR. It's an application level library written for Microsoft HoloLens. We make some minimal assumptions about the development environment, most notably that it's Unity-based. And although we use Microsoft's Mixed Reality Toolkit sharing uh, uh, layer to connect between devices, we've made our design modular enough that developers can easily swap that out for another inner device connectivity method or even to build for another platform. We evaluated our design along several dimensions. First, we looked at compatibility with existing design recommendations and we showed that developers don't have to choose between using our toolkit and being able to adhere to their chosen set of guidelines with regard to multi-user augmented reality interactions. We also constructed representative case study applications based on the case studies that I talked about earlier. Here are some screenshots from them. And this shows that our design is flexible enough to support the functionality needs of a range of different use cases. We also looked at the security and privacy properties of these applications to check that we are able to actually enforce them in practice. And finally, we conducted a performance measurement that showed that the cost of using our toolkit is very reasonable. We're continuing to evaluate this in practice. This summer, we have two undergraduates working to build applications using ShareAR uh, to continue to vet the toolkit's practicality. Uh, here they are. Uh, the toolkit is also available for other developers and researchers to download and play around with. And we're looking for further feedback from practical use of this toolkit. And if this is something that's interesting to you, we'd love for you to visit arsharingtoolkit.com to try it out for yourself. So in summary, multi-user AR security is a topic that needs the attention of the security and privacy community. But security is not enough. In order to actually build practical solutions, we have to build security and privacy solutions based on the functionality requirements of the applications and systems that we're building for. In this work, we contribute a set of goals that a multi-user AR security framework should meet, a design that meets those goals, and an implementation that helps multi-user AR app developers in practice to achieve functionality and security in their applications. I'd like to thank my collaborators, including my mentors and the new members of the Share AR team, uh, the Security and Privacy Lab, as well as the project's funders. Please visit our website and try our code, and I'm happy to take questions. Uh, with Apple. I'm curious how you've uh, weighed the benefits of obscuring this content versus just removing it altogether from a shared space because if we're engaged in a discussion like this, I could get a notification on my watch or on my device and you wouldn't know and we wouldn't be interrupted. But if some sort of thing pops up in a 3D space, everybody is aware that this user is being interrupted they might not pay attention, or maybe even the fact that there is private information could be sensitive. So it's an interesting question, and, and thank you for that. One thing that I would say is that when you get a notification on your phone, people can see there's a phone. People can see that there's a watch. With augmented reality, the only thing that you see is that they have some sort of a device that, that, you know, that's being used. But if they're trying to manipulate something that is out you know, 10 feet in front of them or something like that, all of a sudden, that physicality is gone. And there's only a limited amount that we can do. You know, it's, there's lots of potential future work with bystanders, for instance, who don't have an AR device. Um, and so what, we, what we're trying to tackle specifically is the problem of what, when multiple users of the application, uh, 
we, we can at least mitigate this, this problem from the perspective of multiple users of, of, the, of the error application. Um, so I do think there's future work, but there is something that's fundamentally different about when the content that you're interacting with is separated from a very clear sort of a screen. Hi, uh, Alyssa Redmiles, Microsoft Research in Princeton. Um, there's some research evidence that AR and VR developers come from less traditional development backgrounds. And I was curious how you thought about training developers to use the resources you're creating or how in the future you might do work on usability of these kind of resources. Yeah, uh, that's also a great point. Uh, and it's important that we don't only make this toolkit available, but that we also make it easy to use. And that's something that we've thought about a lot in the design of the API. Uh, and it's something that future work should definitely continue to look at in practice. Uh, for our part, we're doing our best to put forward documentation that explains in very clear language what exactly is the problem that we're trying to solve and why this toolkit is important. And we hope that we, by getting the word out that this is something that needs looking at, the developers will be able to pick up these ideas and, and run with it. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Kimberly.